Welcome to the today's webinar, uh, where we will analyze the state of TV and OTT in Sub-Saharan Africa. But before starting the presentation, I would like to introduce you briefly DataXis. Uh, DataXis is a global business intelligence company which has offices in Europe, America, and Africa. Regarding its research activity, DataXis is, is the leader in market intelligence of pay TV and telecommunications in emerging markets, including Latin America. DataXis also organizes events, namely Next TV CEO and Next TV Series conferences, which are hosted in Miami, Mexico. Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, Bogota, Berlin, Kigali, and Dubai. DataXis also proposes a newsletter, Next TV News for Latin America, Brazil, Africa, and MENA. So, to begin with today's presentation, let's start with a short introduction of the region. Sub Saharan Africa. Uh, pulls 46 countries for 1 billion inhabitants, 226 million households, uh, among them 40% living in cities. There is more than 2,000 languages that are spoken within the territory. Sub-Saharan Africa represents 14% of the total population in 2019, but accounts only for 2.5% of the global GDP. Even inside the region itself, there are some inequalities, notably on revenues. South Africa is by far the most developed country within the region. For that and several reasons we are, that we will see later, it will be subject to a focus apart today. When it comes to the rest of the countries, the region doesn't present the same level of development either. A very interesting aspect to look at is the electrification rate, especially in our, today, in our today's TV analysis. Generally speaking, the electrification in Sub-Saharan Africa is very limited. However, some countries like Seychelles, Ghana or South Africa show relative high penetration. Those specificities can be seen on GDP and population repartition as well. Five countries account for more than 50% of the total GDP, reaching 1,500 billion US dollar in 2019. Population repartition is also unequal. Nigeria, Ethiopia, Tanzania, South Africa, and Democratic Republic of Congo pull more than half of the entire region inhabitants. As mentioned before, South Africa stands aside with a fast and constant improvement of households' equipment, connectivity, and purchasing power. In order to provide an accurate analysis on the Sub-Saharan region, we decided to consider this country separately. In fact, in 2019, it accounts for 22% of the region GDP, pulls 15% of the total TV households, and 28% of the pay TV subscriber with almost 50% of the pay TV revenues. Pay TV penetration is still growing and reached 57% of the TV households in 2019. The pay TV market is dominated by MultiChoice, the South African TV group of Naspers company. In 2019, its satellite service, DSTV, compiled 7.5 million subscribers and GoTV, its DTT service, 300,000. Together, they represent 97% of the total South African pay TV market. In terms of revenue, MultiChoice captures 99% of the 1.6 billion US dollars generated in the first nine in the first nine months in 2019. 
such a domination is historical and multi-choice keeps consolidating its footprint by securing most of international competition sports rights and investing in high value content. Producing content itself, the operator can rely on its pay TV channels network Mnet to cover all segments, including local content. <clears throat> South Africa is also witnessing the development of a relative wide SVOD market. SVOD or subscription subscription VOD can be defined as a paying on-demand video service online. At the moment, South Africa accounts for 83% of fixed line connection and fiber lines within the region. As we mentioned before, SVOD subscription are mainly concentrated in South Africa, which precisely accounts for 75% of the total sub-Saharan market. Mobile broadband is well developed, but the domination is less important. Only 15% of total connection in South Africa. We will see later that the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa relies actually on a quite developed mobile mo connectivity that allows SVOD development as well. It is interesting to look at the internet boom that witnessed South Africa the past years. With a world size strategy, broadband and especially FTTX infrastructures have exploded. In the third quarter 2019, the country numbered 13 million fixed connection for a household penetration of 77%. Four million of those connections are fiber lines. Taking a look uh, to the main actor of uh, the SVOD market, we can find the international giant Netflix on premium subscription segments. However, without a strong local strategy of implementation, it is only in South Africa that this actor meets a relative mass market position. Multi-choice uh, is also present with its OTT service Showmax that confirms its leading position on the online segment as well. Last but not least, Video Play, the OTT of Vodacom, pulls almost 44% market share. The service is only available to its mobile subscribers, but obviously fits the need of local data, affordable price and easy payment methods. The SVOD development will be dwelled into later as we find the same issues in the rest of Sub-Saharan region. <clears throat> but before going on OTT, let's have a broad overview of the TV market structure in the rest of Sub-Saharan countries. Because of low electrification and low purchasing power, TV access is still limited. However, TV equipment is growing and almost 80 million households have a proper television in 2019. Satellite is the most common reception in pay TV. People are more tempted to pay for DTH because it offers a large range of channels, numer numerous package options and premium content. We will also see that the three dominant pay TV actors have built their mayor their main offer on this segment. Cable TV is limited to several countries that have historical infrastructures like Cameroon, Angola, or Mozambique. Digital terrestrial TV is a good and non-expensive alternative to free-to-air in urban areas with existing infrastructures. Like cable TV, those offers have low output and more limited content. IPTV is developing and presents, and presents a lot of advantages in terms of content and quality of service. However, it is limited by the current weakness of wireless broadband infrastructure. And the same remark, remark can be made for OTT linear pay TV. Once again, I would like to precise uh, that this part and these charts uh, do not include South Africa to give a better vision of the market. 
let's uh, take a look now at the free TV, the free TV market. Uh, we can see that the terrestrial reception dominates. Satellite offers are attractive, but they require the households to buy a dish and a set-top box. Yet, and in general, we can see that Sub-Saharan Africa is mainly a free-to-air market and mostly a terrestrial one. Free-to-air television is at its early stage in the region, which is still in the digital switchover process. Once again, there are noticeable disparities. Some countries have already switched off the analog signal for several years, like Tanzania, Rwanda, Mauritius, or Kenya. Some countries haven't yet started the migration. This is the case of the Democratic Republic of Congo or Somalia, for example, where governments didn't really get directly involved in the process. However, most of the country are currently in the transitional process where analog free-to-air households have to migrate to the digital, digital reception. To do so, they need to buy either a compatible television nor a digital set-top box. This financial effort can be supported by a national government, but such policies don't occur everywhere. In 2019, Ivory Coast initiated its migration process while Benin and Cameroon started the trial phase. Last November, in Burkina Faso brutally switched off its analog signal, completing its migration but leaving behind the households that didn't get the digital equipment on time. DTH free to air reception on its size is growing rapidly. Apart from the traditional free to air TV, some operators uh, blend and brand free channels in order to create a national and regional orbital position. The purpose is also to make free channels more attractive for advertisers. This is the case of MyTV, or Matele in French-speaking Africa, which is developing very fast thanks to its local set-top box and offers. Before doing television, its um, parent company, Strong Technology, is actually a set-top box manufacturer. Its growth-driven free-to-air markets are Nigeria, Ghana, and to a less, lesser extent, Ivory Coast. MultiTV pulls more than 2.5 million active set-top box in Ghana. This strong footprint can be explained by its offer, relying on local content, affordable equipment, and a large network of distributors. However, while the subscribers are responding to such offers, a free-to-air market is not yet attractive enough for advertisers without reliable and generalized audience metrics. Broadcasters have difficulties expanding their financial resources and improving the quality and attractivity of their content. Yet, this would be necessary to unlock the financial amount needed to implement an efficient audience measurement system and break out of that vicious circle. When it comes uh, to pay TV, the sub-Saharan region shows once again a constructed, uh, contrasted pictures. Gabon, for example, presents a pay TV penetration of more than 90%, while on their side, Gambia or Li Liberia do not even reach the 10% penetration. In terms of revenue, this is similar. Ethiopia hardly reached $5 million, uh, million in 2018, while Angola almost totals $400 million the same year. What is common to the entire region is the dominance of three pay TV actors. Together, they capture the main share of the 22 million subscriber market, 
totalizing 1.9 billion US dollar at the end of the third quarter 2019. Canal Plus, to start with uh, this operator, operates on the French speaking region with a premium offer distributed on satellite. The French company from Vivendi Group has a strong local strategy and invests in content production. One can mention the acquisition of Rock Studio in Nigeria last year or the investment made in Ivory Coast with its African channel A+. Yet, to face competition, the company has developed more affordable packages and OTT bundled offers. It also plans to launch its DTT service Easy TV in Ivory Coast and Togo this year, adding two markets to its current DTT offer present in Congo and Democratic Republic of Congo. South African's MultiChoice has a dominant presence in English-speaking Africa, while being present in all the region's country, even if uh, sometimes it has very low subscriber base. Uh, for example, in French-speaking country, since it doesn't have French offer. As we mentioned before, it has a premium positioning and operates on DTH and DTT with its respective brands, DSTV and GoTV. Start Times is the third main actor, combining DTH and DTT to reach the maxi maximum subscriber space with a more low-cost position. The Chinese-based group is regularly working with governments to develop TV accessibility through its satellite villages, very limited initiative, or with the construction of DTT infrastructure, like he did in Congo. The company keeps looking into new markets and has entered Cameroon this January. Facing those three giants are not easy, and we have witnessed the problematic this year. Indeed, less than two years after its launch, the pay TV operator Quasi has shut down its activity its activities in the region. The main difficulties that one can quote are mainly securing attractive content, pull new subscriber facing aggressive competition, and positioning its offer in between three colosses. In the past years, Sub-Saharan Africa has seen the emergence of a small SVOD market. For now, it is very limited with around 730,000 active subscriptions in the third quarter 2019. Without surprise, we find the major international SVOD actors, Netflix and Amazon Primes. However, their strategy in terms of pricing and content are very limited. Are very limited and not well adapt to the state of the connectivity in the region. Pay TV giant MultiChoice through its OTT service Showmax pulls larger market share. It can be explained by its well implemented presence and the bad link with its premium DSTV package. Ultimately, there is a wide bouquet of factors for a relatively small market. Not all of them can remain and Quasi was not an exception with its Quasi iFlex service. Generally speaking, SVOD suffers from the poor connectivity of the region, with a current 50% penetration on Facebook brand and 0.2% on mobile one. Let's see if a growth may occur. The fixed wireless broadband state is currently anecdotic in the region. Even if it is expected to improve in the next five years, it will not have the potential to carry a significant SVOD growth. However, how we said before, mobile broadband is quite developed in Sub-Saharan Africa. Today, almost 300 uh, million people have access to 3G or 4G through their phones. That is to say, a 30% penetration in the end 2019. 
Today, the network is limited by infrastructures and the availability of affordable 4G supported devices. But if we look towards smartphone, the situation is evolving with the spread of cheap devices. One can mention the $20 Sansa phone from Orange or the $16 Smart S of MTN. In fact, more and more mobile operators are offering 4G plans and cheaper data bundle with the access to those devices. Those, strategy, those strategies are expected to pay and to almost double 3G and 4G connection in the five coming years, reaching a total of 550 mobile broadband subscription. We estimate that a large growth is going to occur on 4G, although it will remain under 3G in 2024. Hence, wired broadband is very limited and the internet consumption is essentially mobile. Although the current internet speed may not be enough for an entity consumption, the opportunity of de development are enormous. In this configuration, mobile operators have a lot of advantages. Already partnering with uh, content providers for video streaming services, more and more mobile actors start to offer streaming services themselves. There are several reasons for that. They actually uh, fit all the solution to, they have all the solution to uh, solve the challenges that the SVOD deployment is demand, demanding. First, and obviously, there are the mobile broadband providers. Second, they are able to provide affordable data through bundle offers. They can also counter the lack of payment methods by billing their customers on their existing mobile contract or through their prepaid purchases. Most of mobile operators have also implemented mobile money services. Finally, being in the position of telco allow them to partner with broadcasters and video actors without consisting in a front competitor. Mobile TV has spread in the region since a long time with noticeable actors like Orange, Airtel, NTN, Tigo, Maroc Telecom or Vitel, among others. We selected several examples of mobile TV service that launched recently to illustrate the ongoing dynamic. Still ongoing dynamic. MTN TV, for example, launched in Rwanda in January 2017. MTN's Yabadu service, uh, that it's a, a mobile TV service that launched in Cameroon in 2018 joining the already deployed mobile TV service of Orange and Nextel in the country. And Move TV from Maroc Telecom, which initiated its service in Ivory Coast last year, offering 60 TV and radio channels. And finally, one has to mention the recent launch of Airtel TV in Zambia. However, and ultimately, video consumption in Sub-Saharan Africa is mainly happening online and for free. YouTube is the very leading platform in the region, followed by Facebook and local, sometimes illegal, free streaming platforms. Each new entrant, local or global, will have to face this route competition. Some actors still enter the market, such as VIEW and its freemium platform. The business model is the following one. A wide ad-supported content is available to any user, but the platform is encouraging people to subscribe to access premium and ad-free content. However, the development of uh, the AVOD market has to be put in relation with the very limited digital ad expenditure. 
It represented only $660 million in 2018, accounting for only 0.3% of the global value the same year. It has to be underlined that South Africa represents 60% of these figures. Similarly, similarly to the free-to-air TV markets, advertisers are cautious to engage big amounts online, and the digital adex per capita is almost anecdotic. The conclusion that we can make is that while digital drives global adex worldwide, it remains very limited in sub-Saharan Africa. But this could change, because contrary to, contrary to TV, television, digital is able to provide precise audience metrics to advertisers. To conclude this presentation, I would like to show our Sub-Saharan African pay TV forecast for the next five years. The chart includes South Africa. Um, so several remarks. Pay TV is planned to grow from 30 to, five, to 45 million subscribers, reaching more than $6 billion revenues in 2024. DTH is expected to be the main growth dri driver in terms of subscribers and value, followed closely by digital terrestrial pay TV. However, OTT pay TV is expected to present the fastest growth. Free to air market uh, TV is meant to develop alongside, driven by the digital migration process and the spread of attractive free to air booking. However, and as we said before, it will remain limited as long as reliable and systematic audience metric will not be available. The future of SVOD will depend on the evolution of connectivity and especially on mobile broadband. However, we believe that the TV market will not be shaped by digital video like it is currently happening in North America or Western, Western Europe. Hence, pay TV actors are already present on the market and online video will not yet represent a substitute in terms of connectivity, usage, network, or access. All these subjects uh, will be debated with top executives of the main actors of the industry in Next TV CEO Africa. 29 and 30th April in Kigali, Rwanda. So I invite you to check the conference website to see the agenda and speaker, speakers of the fifth edition. Registration are open and you can contact us for any inquiries. Uh, we have also the pleasure to announce the launch of Next TV series MENA, our brand new conference focusing on Middle East and on North African markets. It will take place in Dubai the 6th October. So now I will take uh, some questions that you can submit uh, in the chat. So, um, for the record, the presentation will be available uh, online uh, after the presentation. You will be able to download the presentation. So, uh, about, about multi-TV, TV households um, population, you mentioned that multi-TV Multi-TV TV source population, while our last uh, satellite monitor results 
gave triple eight in Ghana alone. Could you please share? So um, 2.5 uh, million multi TV set top box in Ghana is our estimation of uh, set top active set top box um, in Ghana, actually. Uh, it depends on the methodology that are used. We have actually uh, sources. We can discuss it uh, by email. Don't hesitate, uh, Theodore, to come back to me on this subject. Do you have any plans to spread Startime to South Africa? So in fact, um, Startime is already present in uh, South Africa under its brand Starsat. But it has a low market share facing uh, multi-choice. Where stands uh, Zap TV? So Zap TV is present in Angola and Mozambique as broadband and IPTV uh, operator. So any estimated of how piracy has affected the pay TV growth? So um, this, is, this is the type of subject that are discussing during our conference in uh, Kigali, Rwanda, about the piracy. Uh, you didn't mention the TNT Africa Free to DTH service from Mali. Uh, yes, it is available, uh, still available in Mali.
So when will be the MENA conference call? Actually, uh, it is a conference, uh, so physical conference hosted in Dubai, uh, and it will be the 6th October. Will you share the slides with participants? Yeah, it will be available online on dataxis.com um, webinar. You click on webinar and you will access the, the presentation that you can also download. Orange Lounge Mobile TV offer in Madagascar, Guinea on or Ivory Coast over the two years waiting you mention it. Uh, so we are uh, tracking mobile TV uh, subscriber by operators, more specifically in our um, mobile intelligence offer. However, we choose just selected examples to, 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 to shed light on the deployment of the services. If you are interested in this subject, you can uh, come back to me uh, to talk about it. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, I have, I may have missed some questions. I will go back to uh, all of them right after, and I will personally email those who haven't received an answer. Client of DataXis can also write me through an inquiry for more precise insights. Thank you, everyone. This is the end of this webinar. Uh, thank you very much for having attended the presentation. Again, if you need further information about today's topic or DataXis conferences, don't hesitate and write me an email. Thank you all. Goodbye.